Captain Will. He's still dead to the world. If you disassemble everything, you'll eventually find out. Where's the box that you opened? Where the pure roll of furler is. I almost feel like it's gonna be where this place is gonna be torn apart again to be put back together. This person, McDonald's, what do you say? <laughs> They're both gonna make me have to poop. Sometimes reality is a hard pill to swallow, particularly if you live on a boat. So we are barely out of the gate and we're playing chicken with a fairy. Sure, there are the amazing moments where you're sitting on anchor pinching yourself because you've reached the closest thing to Nirvana you will ever encounter. We got in about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I think by the time we finally went to bed, it was 4 a.m. But for the most part, boat life is all about fixing your boat in exotic locations. It's Jessica against Barnacle. Look at, see the marks around it? I've been trying to get this one off, and I'm getting so pissed, and it's not going to beat me. Anticlimactic? Not really, because it still beats the heck out of sitting in a cubicle. In our case, we have just finished our Atlantic crossing, like yesterday. It's like I'm home. That's it. Gotta go behind. <laughs> Time for a baguette. But there's no rest to be had at all. Our vacation was the crossing. And we're on land! Oh my gosh! When I was trying to get back on the boat, I jumped off to, to, to go walk at the end of the dock, and when I jumped back on, I almost fell. It's like my legs gave out underneath me. Join us as we get back to the business of getting the boat back in shape. Listen, I'd rather be in shorts and a t-shirt than in a jacket doing all this work. And also enjoy a little of what our new home has in store for us. He paid his dues in the mad and now he's I feel like we spent the last year and a half building for this moment. Thank you so much to our patrons whose support make these episodes possible. Good morning from our first official day back on land. I think we were all in bed by like five minutes to nine last night and out like a light. We were so tired. This We all slept awesome and I'm up at six o'clock and I'm ready to start the day. Last night was like, I didn't feel when we got off the boat like I was rocking at all when I was on land. But last night when I got up to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I had a really bad pain in my temple. And I felt like I was on in a hurricane, just walking to the bathroom on the boat. And clearly the boat was not moving at all, but my mind thought it was moving. It was so incredibly weird. I went back to sleep this morning. I feel totally fine. And I am wondering how much of the rest of the family is up. I heard some stirring. Unfortunately, we, our life isn't that, that we can take a week and just chill and rest. So we got a great night's sleep and we're hitting it hard today. So the kids are back at school. Um, Will and Brad are going to fix and repair everything on the boat that kind of went, you know, broke while we were out there. Things do break. I am going to get back to World Towning business and probably do some cleaning up inside the boat and getting a bit organized. Um, here's to our new life on a new continent. Good morning. <laughs> we're in the Caribbean and it rained. <laughs> We're in the Caribbean. Our first morning after a 21, 20 hour sail and it's raining. And we woke up to this place is a disaster. Yeah, no kidding. Captain Will, he's still dead to the world. The infamous Avalon, the writer of all predict wind interaction, who's a legend now. If you're one of our, if you're not one of our patrons, you don't know what I'm talking about, Miss Avalon. Basically, I wrote a bunch of updates every day, and they were very funny, um, humorous updates about what we did every day. And now people want more of them. <laughs> and now you gotta get back to school, bummer. <laughs> How'd you sleep last night? I slept great. I actually woke up on my own at 6:43, and I was like, ready wasn't to start tired. the day. Yeah. Lago woke up at six. Brad and Dad are the late sleepers. <laughs> Largo, make sure Dad's still breathing. Oh, there he goes. He's not, <laughs> I don't think he wants his foot on his head. <laughs> Largo, what's on your agenda for first day back school. at school? Are you excited about that? No. Do you think you're going to be able to function in this chaos today? Probably not. Probably not. What? Hi! Welcome back to reality! What's up on, what's on your agenda today? Schoolwork. 
back to school. Are you excited back about to that? School for like seven hours. All right, and you kind of locked yourself in your cabin because it's probably the only place that's not chaotic in it here. It's the only place. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, so cool. clean. Of you. I know. So pleasant. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, cleaning it because I knew I would have no place else to study. <laughs> All right, it's just a lot of old stuff, is what you do after a process. And on my list of things to do today, I'm kind of doing a hybrid. I definitely want to get a shower and change my clothes. I'm going to start organizing the boat back to um, non crossing mode. Um, and I wouldn't mind going for a walk or maybe a coffee date with Will if I can fit that in as well. So, um, transitioning back to, I guess. I don't know, non-crossing life. So here's my clean kitchen. I know many of you would look at this and say, that is not a clean kitchen. However, the stove is clean and soaking. The backsplash is pretty clean. Um, I have cleaned underneath those counters. All the dishes are done. The racks are soaking. And this is, I think, about as clean as it's going to get um, for today. And I'm pretty proud of that. We have a new starter battery that's going to be coming in over there. And I almost feel like it's going to be where this place is going to be torn apart again to be put back together at the last second. We got the new furling line for our mainsail that's coming back in as well. And um, other than that, it's fun. Now our first item to fix on board was the first thing that went wrong during the passage. The reefing line for our in-mass furling mainsail snapped and we had to come up with a solution on the fly to get us through the rest of the passage. We are. We had an issue last night with our reefing line for our furling mainsail and right now if we wanted to extend the mainsail 100% out, we kind of can't. And now that we are tied down, it's time to get things right because a broken reefing line is not the type of issue you just want to have sitting around. They found a solution, you were able to open the box, you right? Just, if you disassemble everything, you'll eventually find out. Where's the box that you opened? Right up here where the roll of furler is. Oh, I thought it was from right here. No, well where we did it? that as well, just where to is get it? an angle. But Show me. Oh, that? Yes. So that's where... Where? This is where the, the, the rope goes in that, oh. Oh, that wow. hauls in the line. That's what would open? This wouldn't come out. And so we, exactly. we undid these screws and then, the, then we just popped it out. So the lesson for the day is there's always a solution for a problem lesson, in sailing. The lesson is as long as you're still alive. don't always trust the manufacturer to give you <laughs> risky we advice. We won't say who the manufacturer is. This it's, apparently it's, it's was not... Bars. This was apparently not in their <laughs> guidebook. Is that... Well, and I don't think they want to take a responsibility for you going beyond their warranty manufacturing stuff. All right, so how long does it take to fix this? You need to buy more line, more, right? We need some more rope, yeah. Then it shouldn't it? take long to put it back together again. Very cool. All right. Yep, we're going shopping. Oh. En fait, il uh, y a un cycle où chaque matin, il y a de. Um, uh, il, il pleuvoit, et puis après cela. So taking on some an extreme voyage like this, when we've only officially been sailing a year, has all kinds of levels of stress and anxiety and, and risk and everything else. But the best part of this whole thing right now is listening to Largo tell his French teacher about the journey with such enthusiasm and passion. I can only stand, understand about half of what he's saying, but I can tell by his body language and everything else that it really was um, monumental for him and that makes it so incredibly special. Il pleut et puis après cela, il y a un soleil pour le reste du jour. So while we're here, I am having to get ourselves replenished with I got you hear that clanging thing? Those are butane gas bottles. Like these right here, I have to get a refill of those. Plus our Gas storage has to be refilled because we use every single ounce of it during the passage to use our generator. And it's like a 10, 15 minute walk to the fuel, stop, fuel dock. I can't take the dinghy there. I would like to take a dinghy there. I don't have any gas for the engine. That's, this is gonna solve the problem. I've got a lot more gas to pick up. One of the things that we thought when we got to the Caribbean was going to be that how do we get things and how remote is it going to be to do that? I am, I'm now walking around. I've walked through two different chandleries. 
the fuel dock which is super efficient and I am I'm kind of thrilled with the fact that there's there's little challenges so far this is Martinique so it's still technically France so I imagine that this is still as easy as it comes uh, I'm carrying all this stuff I got another gas tank in the hand I'm carrying the camera so if it's a little shaky I apologize but so far things are good I'm, I'm really excited about that plus we got croissants this morning so no complaints at all uh, I gotta put this camera down after a full day's work and a second night of amazing sleep, we continue to work on repairs for the boat. But while the kids were taking classes online, Will and I escaped to see what was around. So we went from being in Europe where things have been a little bit more packaged. In a, in a bottle. <laughs> now, of and now it's 100% rustic. I love it. Walking down the side of the road, check out this dude selling oh. coconuts. He's not even selling coconut, he's just doing the coconut milk. I love coconut milk. I love coconut milk. It just, it, it cleans you out. Coconut water? I don't know what it is. How many coconuts do you think it takes? Mm. Is that a joke? It seems like a joke. How many licks does it take I to get think, to the bottom of the Tootsie Roll probably, Tootsie Bottle? I honestly think it takes about 15. Looks like it takes about Wow, they fill up pretty fast actually. I think it takes I think it takes less than what did I say? How many did I think it fill, took to fill it up? Less I, than fifteen. Oh I think it's I think it's probably like seven to fill it up now. It's hard to tell because I wasn't keeping an eye on him. I was kind of dodging the coconut flying at me. Look at you got the McDonald's cup. Yeah. Don't show me Hide on the that. evidence. Oh my god. We had to stop for a bathroom. Trying to be healthy and I've got McDonald's in my hand. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Look at that. Spoon, spoon. As a spoon? Yes. You can eat it? Just like that? Yep, just like that. You think so? Does it come out that easy? Oh, wow. Mm. How is it? It's light. It's pretty good. Yeah. How come it's not? I know nothing about coconuts. Someone educate me. Is this a baby one? Is that why it's soft in here and there's not much meat? I don't know. Was it a different kind of coconut? That's good. It this person McDonald's. What do you say? <laughs> They're both gonna make me have to poop. <laughs> Is that TMI? <laughs> I know you guys coming late. That's really good. If you were to ask anyone in the family what we were looking forward to the most since we became a liveaboard family, it was to get to the Caribbean. Being in Europe was great, but the hot sun and the perfect beaches were what we had in mind for a long time. So before we had a mutiny on our hands, we put our boat projects aside and decided that now was the time to enjoy what we had come for. We arrived in Martinique and today I said, Will, we can't do any more boat jobs, any more repairs. It's got to wait. We are getting out to a beach. I don't care if it's even for five minutes. And you know what Will said? Of course. No, I said, I said that we still have our onions and our oranges from, from the Canary Islands right behind you. I can't imagine those oranges are good anymore. Oh my God, we do. The onions may keep, who knows? Oh, those are gross. All right, anyway, so I come out here and I'm like, I'm gonna film them getting the dinghy ready and everything. And this will be real fun for you guys to see, to put the motor back on and whatever. And it's done. They're like ready to go. Look at Largo over there. Are you ready, Largo? Engine's on. Test one of new dinghy engine. Begin. It's been, this has been the first time that we actually start the engine on our dinghy since it fell in the water. So close. Oh, it just sounds mean. Avalon, you gonna jump off and pull us in? Ooh, this is so nice. Look at this. We all fun. We all drew straws to see who would pull us in. And Avalon won. All right, get out, Avalon. Uh, Avalon will drown here. 
Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty deep here. Yeah, it's still pretty deep here. Alan does not. Oh, I don't really? Yeah, it's deep here. Seriously? Yes. No, we're getting close. Your shirt's sure gonna get wet. I want us to push you out. Because we will push you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 no, don't try. Oh, no, my God, it's over your there head. There we go. It's over your head, honey. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what did he say, Avalon? He said you are two women, you can help them. <laughs> so we've landed now in Pont Marin, which is basically a good 10 minute dinghy ride from the marina. And what was a little rough in terms of like getting through the, the, the waves and so forth and so on rewards us with this amazing <laughs> clear blue water. It's about time we get to this part, part of the world. And we have boats galore. I'm wondering why we paid for a marina. All you have to do is just anchor out right over here. Uh, that's going to be our ammo going forward. Post Atlantic crossing maintenance had to get done. From this point forward, it's, it's free. It's free. How do you feel? It's as if I packed like we were going away for a month. Well, I'm a little out of practice. I put the food and the suntan lotion in the bottom. But we're all taken care of. <laughs> right? We can, no. do, we, can do, we can do another crossing with what we have here. <laughs> they dropped their towel and we're in the water in under a minute of us getting here. Look and how, Look how clean that water was. It is clean. And you know what's funny, Will? Because, okay, so yesterday, we used to live in Boston before we left the US, and yesterday they got like, I don't know, 800 feet of snow. And both the kids were saying a little bit like, oh, I kind of miss snow. And they got here and they're like, ooh, beach? Snow who? And then you gotta watch out for the falling coconuts. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's always a concern around here. Dorothy, we're not in the Met anymore. If you've been following our life since we came on board Friendship, you know that we have endured a pretty tough 18 months to get to where we are now. Going from knowing next to nothing about liverboard life to a transatlantic crossing is no easy feat. With that, we really enjoyed our first beach moment in Martinique. Does it feel good to be back behind the wheel since summer? It's like the first time since, honestly, August that we've been doing this. I, this is nice. I miss Dingy. I miss the car. So welcome from the back of Friendship. I am in my dinghy in the marina. Um, this is one of the things that we are really concerned about here in the Caribbean because the only way that we were able to protect the dinghy while we were in the, in the med was through the painter, which is essentially, if you're asking, what's a painter? No, it's not a brush. It's the line that goes from the front of the dinghy to anything. You want to tie it to a cleat, you want to tie it to the boat, you want to tie it to anything. That is the only way we've been using to sort of protect the dinghy. And in the med, it's generally a safe zone where people don't steal many dinghies. You hear of stories, but it doesn't happen that often. In the Caribbean, however, it's a different story. You hear of dinghy thefts a lot. So we have to do a little bit more than just having a rope to tie it down to. You see, in general, in the Caribbean, people do not stay in marinas if they can avoid it. There's no real reason to do it unless you have to load up on electricity or water or whatever the case may be. And then if that's the case, you can go ahead and go to a fuel dock and then refill the water there. And then as far as electricity, well, hope you have enough solar. We're working on that. The idea of going to shore to go ahead and get provisions, to go get a bite to eat, to go do, I don't know, anything, um, requires your dinghy and requires you leaving it, you're leaving your dinghy for a prolonged period of time. It could be hours, it could be minutes, it could be anything. But if you see the dinghy dock, and I'm gonna take it right over there now, uh, you're gonna see how other people type their dinghy. It's not with a painter. <laughs> I think we have a lot to do. We got measures to take care of that though. There's two different ways. There are essentially two different ways to go ahead and tie up your dinghy here on a dock when you're in a marina um, here in the Caribbean. There are, well, there's three, but no one ever does, just the painter. Um, the one is using a very thick stainless steel chain, something that is eight to 10 millimeters thick, that is super, super durable, and only needs 
well it needs like a serious angle grinder to go ahead and get rid of. The other item is like this boat over here. It's like a bike lock. Well, it is a bike lock. That is, that's a bike lock that's tied to a lock, a very big lock. And that very big lock is very hard to break. However, the bike lock chain is, well, it's super easy to break. And as much as any single link, any single point of holding is only as strong as its weakest link, that, that little bike lock right there can be snapped with easy just wire cutters in two seconds. A big chain, a big chain like this, takes a dude with a big tool making a lot of noise saying, hey, look at me, look what I'm doing. If you're asking me what I want for my boat, I want something that's a little bit more of a challenge for Mr. Thief so that um, we can get our, we can keep our dinghy. This is what we have. I have five meters of, I think this is 10 mil chain, or say eight mil chain stainless steel, I don't know. It was like 20 euros a meter and it is, well, it's one of the things that's on our project list for today. So our plan now for the chain is this. We are going to attach this chain to the cleat that's down here in the aluminum rib. Rib stands for um, rugged, um, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it is a rib, but it's like a, a, a rubber um, inflatable. inflatable boat. Yeah, maybe, no, no, no. I have no idea. The two of us together it's something brain. inflatable boat. <laughs> Let me know, I don't remember the name. But anyway, so our plan is this. So we have a cleat down here, and what we're gonna do is put the shackle around the cleat and then attach the last link of the chain to the shackle. And then with our Loctite, we're gonna lock it down and make sure it's super tight. And then once that's in and we lock it down, it's gonna be the type of shackle we have is a hex screw. And this is important because we wanna make sure that there's no sort of maneuverability at the end. A lot of shackles have like a little like widget at the end that you can sort of twist with your hand. With this, it's perfectly tight, uh, tight in. And then after that, we're going to- It's tool time with Will. It is tool time. And then we're gonna basically drill out the end so no one can come in with a hex screw and then untie it. And is this a Will Swero creation? This is the first Good year God, this. no. This is someone in the Caribbean who knows what they're doing and has been so kind to educate ah, me as to what's so happening. So you enlisted a local's help? I, no, I paid the Chandlery guy. You paid him to tell you how to do this? No, but I bought the stuff and he's oh. like, what do I, I asked him what I need. And, <laughs> but we still need the painter because when we're tying up to a boat, you're not gonna put this big stainless steel chain right. up we, to a boat. We go to visit friends, we're like, here's our chain. And they're like, dude, <laughs> bad scene. So although wouldn't you could you would you want to chain up if you're visiting a friend's boat because then someone could just come by and steal it when you're probably no because uh, that does a couple kind of shades to the women at their teeth. I don't think it's a good idea. Not that you do that because you don't drink and drive the dinghy. Don't drill through the bottom of the our what's it called a rugged aluminum boat I think that's not I then that we a rag. rugged inflatable boat. <sighs> just don't drill through that rugged inflatable thing. It is. I see water. Um, can you hold it away from the bottom? Is this to go all the way through? Let's see if it, it. No, it's just supposed to get rid of the. Oh, so someone doesn't. I get it. I get so it. No so someone doesn't undo it. it. So right now, it's, it still can be done. All right. So now the only way that this thing is going to come off is with a hacksaw. I'm sorry, with like a big angle grinder. So there's no way at this point, now we're committed to this chain for a really long time. I'm pretty happy about that. It's a pretty thick chain. I think this is the quickest project we've ever done ever in the <laughs> I don't 12, even know if it's worthy of being on 12 YouTube. and a half, 12 and a half years. <laughs> we've not yet set foot in the water. We have not, that's pathetic. Yeah, that's really pathetic. But we're responsible. We're getting our boat stuff done so we can just take off and never see land again. That's us, the responsible sailing chain. Everyone wants to watch that, huh? <laughs> That's no fun. I love it. Oh my gosh. What do I do with it now? Now, we're gonna What's have the painter? The rope. Oh, is that what the rope's called on the dinghy? Yep. yep. It's called a painter? Yep. I talked about this on camera already. Oh, you did? Well, I, did. I, was, I wasn't there, so this is all new for me. 
and I am still trying to dig myself out of the inbox. But, but I do, I do love cleaning up my inbox. There's so many really cool messages from you guys um, of support and just everything else. It really makes us feel like we weren't out there alone, that you guys are all there with us virtually, which is very